gonna spread turkey turds today. And yes, we're in the Magnum. And uh, no, we're not in the Terrigator. The good news is, well the bad news is, the Terrigator's rear axle went like that. And uh, the drive shaft's kind of twisted and all the hanger bearings are trash too. But, the good news is we did find a new rear axle. The bad news is it's in Iowa. The good news is they're pulling it sometime this week. So, hopefully we'll have that thing put back together. We're gonna have to put, take the uh, back tires off of it and a bunch of other fun stuff, but that's beside the point. Um, the good news is we're gonna be able to uh, have that thing up and running again. I'm just glad the transmission's not out because I was gonna scrap the thing if that was the case because they're like 30 grand and that truck was like not even close to 30 grand. But we got a new litter bucket on the pickup back there. I don't know if you guys can see it or a new litter bucket on the uh, skid steer. It's like 90 some inches wide. So hopefully we'll be able to fill the spreader quite a bit quicker and uh, get some things done today. There's just enough of a uh, frost this morning. I don't know how late we'll be able to spread, uh, but it's very cold right now, but it is gonna thaw out uh, as the day goes on. So I don't know how long we'll actually be able to spread, but we're gonna give it a go. So as you can see, uh, that litter bucket, it's big, it's very big. So he's gonna start scooping and we're gonna start spreading. Here goes nothing. Got a little bit of a crust on top, but uh, that's why he's tipping the bucket down. This isn't his first rodeo, so tip the bucket down like that, and it does a very good job of busting it up just enough that it comes out of the spreader better. So skid steer clears really well. Uh, plenty of room there, so we'll get loaded up and well, we got 100 acres here to spread, so there's 100 acres worth of manure, and we'll see what happens. Well, 65, 66 acres later, we're getting something done. This pile's getting awfully small, so that's good. My fuel cap came off somewhere, so I have a bag of cheese that's zip-tied on. I cleaned the bag out real good before I zip-tied it on there, but I figure it's better than nothing. It's like the third fuel cap I've lost, and I'm getting them tight, so I don't understand why they're coming off, but whatever. Anyhow, we're spreading, or getting loaded, whatever. So we're running right over 10 mile an hour, spreading it out, three ton an acre, auto steer working. Life's good, pretty easy day. Spreading. Last load. Hope so. I'm hoping it all fits on the spreader, but I don't know that it will. But we're gonna try. As you can see, it gets piled up pretty good. But there's nothing wrong with that. Less trips that way, right? acres there's two there's a 48 acre field and the other one's about 48 because there's a little three acre three acre i can't talk three acre triangle that i don't think i'm gonna farm next year i'm gonna put it into hay it's just kind of a pain to farm and it's super wet but um 48 and 48 plus a little overlap had some extra litter so i pulled up my soil samples and anywhere that was a little bit low i just kind of hit a second time so we're gonna go get the steiger and the reel disc and start working this in and the uh, skid steer has got to go to my house because um 
I've got gravel for my uh, garage that's being built, that's delivered, and they need it spread so they can pour concrete. So we're going to go do that real quick. All right, so the real disc is hooked up, and real quickly, before I head to that field that we just spread turkey litter on, this is all the pond muck that we shoved out of the pond. I dug it out with the excavator, and then we shoved it around with a skid steer. And so while it's dry-ish, I figured I'd come out here and try and knock it down and level it up a little bit. Uh, it's very rough, so I'm just using the wing because I got tired of bouncing in the cab very, very, very quickly. So, um, yeah, it's it's rough out here. So I'm just using the wing and trying to level it up a little bit. And, uh, well, hopefully that works next year. And we're back. It's not dry, but it's not wet. But as far as making any compaction, I'm not that concerned because it's going to be like negative five negative ten the next few days so the freeze is definitely going to uh forgive me of my sins of what i'm doing right now i feel like so uh then we're supposed to get like somewhere between a half an inch and 70 inches of snow nobody can quite tell us what we're gonna get but then followed by that we're supposed to get a bunch of rain and uh i don't want all this turkey litter washing away because it's not cheap so um, after that, we will be, uh, hopefully having all this worked in and looking good and life will be good. And next year we'll burn this down and plant it. So uh, that's the plan. Hopefully it all works out, but, uh, we'll see. Working dirt. So we were moving the skids to here and blew a tire on the trailer so michael just went and got a new tire and i know morgan got started here i don't know if you can see it or not but there's a bolt missing there that's just falling out so now we got to go to the shop and go get a bolt before i rip one of the disc gangs off of this so i don't know if it just came loose or if it sheared it but i'm guessing it just came loose i'm hoping it just came loose nothing has nothing's torn up down there at all it's just sheared the bolt I don't know. Or it fell out. I, I don't know which one. All right. We stopped at the shop, ate some deer steak, uh, got fed, grabbed stuff to drink, grabbed some Red Bulls, grabbed some chips, and we're ready to run late tonight. It's supposed to start raining at 8 a.m., and then after that, it's supposed to rain all day. It's going from 42 degrees tomorrow down to... I want to say negative five by the end of the night. Uh, it's going to turn to ice, turn to snow. And we're supposed to get uh, snow. I, I don't know how much. I've heard anywhere from two foot to two inches. I, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, love this Magnum. One of the things that I don't like, though, is that... Uh, Try and shut it off here. But we put a light bar. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it's mounted right up there on top. It's just a real slim, narrow light bar. But we mounted that up there because there I got it shut off. But put it on a switch. And uh, in years past, that thing would, uh, you couldn't see how much litter was in the spreader at all. So that's why we put that light bar there. And uh, now you can see in the spreader. All right, Michael's trading me spots. He is going to spread litter. And I, after I climb up here one-handed, I'm gonna go work ground. So we're gonna get a nice relaxing evening of Bluetooth music and questionable dirt working. I mean, that's therapeutic right there. Turning corn stalks into no stalks. Between the uh, chopping corn head and this McFarland reel disc, which I don't have the blades set aggressively right now at all, 
Uh, they're in the, I could set them dead straight, but I've got them set at a little bit of an angle, but I could go a lot more. So I'm not trying to move a lot of dirt right now. I'm just trying to chop and mix, but that reel, that chopping reel back there, flailing around, flipping and turning, does a really, really good job to mix residue and mix this uh, turkey litter in. I mean, some of it'll still be up on top of the ground and some of it'll be, I don't know, I'm going about three inches deep right now. Uh, I probably should shallow it up a little bit, but I don't know. I I like this. Uh, I like having everything incorporated about three inches. I do. Um, I plant the beans about an inch deep. I mean, it just depends on weather, but normally about an inch deep on beans. Uh, so they've got plenty of P and K all around the root system, which I like. So plenty of washouts in this field. Uh, slowing down for one now. Uh, thankfully, uh, I get along really well with the landlord here and the one right across the road. And uh, we've extended leases uh, or talked about extending leases um to get this tiled um, so looking to get this place tiled uh probably next year i don't think i'm gonna get to it this year but definitely next year uh get get some tile and some of these washouts and get some dry dams built um, and keep the dirt where it's supposed to be which is in the field so it'll also help the drainage of this a lot um, i'll run some probably a lot of six inch tile up some of the ditches and then do three inch laterals with tap tees and I don't know about 60 foot centers uh, would be what I feel like is adequate for this farm it it's not super super wet it's fairly rolling so it sheds water fairly well but there's a few places that like to hold water like down in here which it would be nice to have tiled because it would grow a lot better anyhow I'll quit rambling. I'm just enjoying life, doing some tillage. I'm also gonna add this just because somebody's gonna say it because there's dirt sticking to the tires and stuff. Yes, it's a little bit wet. Um, if this was spring, I wouldn't be working ground this wet, but it's not and it's gonna freeze and it's gonna forgive me of my sins, so. Um, getting rid of the residue that'll dry out really quickly in the spring and it's going to mellow out so much by spring that I'm not really concerned about it so as far as creating compaction the freeze is going to take care of that so it's mostly dry I mean you could make mud balls out of it in places but it's good enough for government work which is kind of funny because I'm going to the state ground next. Here's the stuff that doesn't make it on YouTube very often. This was a slough hole that I didn't even bother shelling the corn in because, well, it, it was pretty worthless. But the cockleburr crop was really good and the fall panicum and grass and everything else. It grew great, the corn not so much. Good old state ground, it's full of wet holes like that, that just, they don't grow anything. And in fact, most of these fields don't really grow anything, but hey, it's cheap ground. Well, I'm all but caught up to the spreader. Uh, he's like three fields ahead of me, which sounds like a lot, but on the state ground that's like four acres ahead of me in three fields so um, I'm gonna hop in the skid steer I don't think we're gonna get all this stuff spread before it starts raining so this pile over here is actually several piles from the semi dumping uh, so I'm gonna jump in the skid steer and shove it all up in one pile that way water sheds off of it better and it's not super wet when we go to spread it um, and we've got some lime coming tomorrow too that we'll put around the pile that way it doesn't wash away at all it kind of contains it uh, we're doing it the uh, IDEM approved way so especially being on state ground we're 
dotting our T's and crossing our I's. So I'm gonna get in the skid steer and play in a big old pile of shit. Well, it's 1.30 and I told him he does not have to finish tonight, but he's hell bent on getting done before it starts raining. So said I wasn't gonna be opposed to it, but I wasn't gonna make him work that late either. So off he goes. Hey guys, end of this video, fast forwarding about two weeks, but I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Hope you guys all have a happy new year. Uh, progress is being made on the house. We've got the foundations poured and uh, even got the concrete pad that I mentioned in this video board right there for the garage. So slowly but surely making progress. Should have some lumber showing up today, but it is raining quite a bit off and on all day today so we'll see but uh just want to thank you guys for watching this past year uh the channel has grown it's about doubled um so that's been awesome um just really appreciate it and uh want to wish you guys all a happy new year and uh well keep watching because we're gonna keep making these videos so thanks again and i'll catch you guys next time